What's up guys, I'm back again with another tutorial and in this one I'm going to show you how to play a Thomas Wave and Naomi games which are basically Sega arcade games from the 2000s to 2012 or so on um, so a lot of these games were never ported to the Dreamcast but they do run off Dreamcast uh, hardware and you, if you find like a lot of obscure ones that I've never played of before and um, there's some really cool games out there that you can try out and I'm going to show you how to put this on to your Series S or X you do need dev mode and you do need RetroArch set up for this um, I do have previous tutorials on how to do that but I'll link them in the description below so the first thing what you need to do is you need to grab the MAME BIOS pack which is this one here this has the various different BIOSes uh, in order to run certain MAME games but we only need a select few which on the github page it tells you which one you need so for Thomas Wave and Naomi BIOS we need these six here we also need to put them into a DC folder. So refer to this website, planetemu.net. Click on Telecharger. Let this download. Um, once this downloads, you should have a folder that looks like this one here. And then we just need to select the ones mentioned on the GitHub page. Um, it doesn't say Naomi 2, but I'm going to pick this anyway and Naomi GD. And then make a folder called DC. And we need to transfer the BIOS into the internal storage of the Xbox series. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. I'm also just going to connect to the uh, remote access to the Xbox. So type in your address here onto a new website. It will tell you it's not private. Go to advance, proceed, and then enter the password, well, the login and the password that you set up for your remote access. Uh, we're just going to access our Xbox and transfer the Thomas Wave and Naomi ROMs uh, internally because that's the only way i found that they run smoothly. They don't really run on the hard drive. You have to play them through the ex internal storage. I click on File Explorer here. Click on Browse. Uh, we need to enter this command onto control panel so click on search cmd command prompt right click and paste this again what this does is it adds an exception and puts the username and password for this address for this address here and then you don't have to keep putting your username and password um, we click enter credential added successfully now we can copy this link let's open up another file explorer and then paste that link and here we're into our internal storage of our xbox series click on windows apps and then RetroArch is this second folder here. Click on Games. Now I've already got a file here for Naomi Games. Um, a Thomas Wave games actually run fine on the hard drive. It's just Naomi Games because they're they're kind of enhanced uh, Dreamcast games. For this purpose, we can put Thomas Wave Games. I almost put that wrong. 
Tomos, Tomes Wave games. Have a few games here. If we just examine one of these, you have a dot lst and a dot bin file. That's what you should have. Same again with a Thomas Wave. Double click. And these are a lot of different files here, but it should look something like this. They aren't very big either, so that's another bonus to these games. Just double click a Thomas Wave once you've created the file, the folder, and then paste these in here. Right, so I've got some Naomi ROMs here, and with these you do need to uh, unzip them unlike the Thomas Wave where they can just be zipped. So let's just unzip this game here and then copy the LST and the .bin file and then we're going to put them into our Naomi, file, uh, Naomi folder. I've already got it here, but let's just replace these. Okay, so you should have a folder that looks like this. All of these are in subfolders as well. So we've got our Naomi games here, which are unzipped, and then our Thomas Wave games here, which are zipped in the main format. And just to refer back onto the GitHub, if you do have troubles uh, with some of your ROMs, this just tells you what file format that you need. And then there's also a spreadsheet of what games uh, run with the uh, RetroArch and we do need to use the Flycast emulator for running these games because they do off uh, they do run off Dreamcast hardware so Nomi and the Thomas Wave games they do not have their own uh, emulator Right, so once your games are transferred and you've got your BIOS files ready to go, uh, we are going to plug our external hard drive onto the Xbox and transfer the DC BIOS. All right, we're back onto our Xbox now and we've got our external hard drive plugged in. So click on My Files Explorer. And then we want to go onto removable removable storage devices. Click on your hard drive. And I have the DC folder here. And then on the tab at the top here, just open that up and then we want to get into our RetroWatch folder, so click on Isolated Storage. Go up here to Packages, and then there'll be this top one here. Local State, and the System folder is where your BIOS files are for various other systems. I've already got a DC folder here, and this also has the Dreamcast BIOS. Now if you don't have the folder already then you can just copy the whole DC folder. Copy folder there and then paste it in the root of the system folder. 
So once you've got your BIOS files in the correct place, you can just exit, exit off My Files Explorer. Right, so we're now in RetroArch and we need to find our ROMs. So we're going to make a directory. We're going to do a manual scan. Click on Content Directory. And our ROMs are on the S folder, S drive. Go all the way down to Program Files. Windows apps and then it's the second RetroArch folder which is this one and our games are here. I'm going to click on the Thomas Wave, scan this directory. System name, now because a Thomas Wave doesn't have its own emulator we're just going to click on HP name for our system name for the Thomas Wave and then our default core will be the Sega Dreamcast and Naomi Flycast emulator so click on that And then I'm going to click on Scan Inside Archives. Overwrite Existing Playlist and then Start Scan. And if we scroll all the way here, we should find our Thomas Wave games. So here's our Thomas Wave games. We need to do the same with Naomi. So go down to import content and then manual scan down to our S drive. on the Naomi folder that you created earlier, scan this directory, I'm going to change the system name to just MAME and again it's using the Dreamcast Flycast uh, emulator start scan and now I've basically made a playlist for both the Atomus Wave and the Naomi games. So let's try out a game, shall we? First thing you want to do is just double check your driver video, make sure it's set to D12, and then scroll to your Atomus Wave playlist, which I put under as. HP MAME Now before we start the game we do need to go onto our RetroArch menu by pressing select and start and we need to scroll down to all the way down to options From here we can also change the resolution, so we can upscale it to 1080p if we wanted to. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as default for now. So you want to go into options and scroll all the way down to threaded rendering. So it says it runs the GPU and CPU on different threads. Uh, if you have this turned off, you, you'll realize that your Dreamcast games or a Thomas Wave Naomi games will 
be very stuttery. Um, the sound will be choppy and the gameplay is just unplayable. So we need to make sure to turn threaded rendering on uh, in order to have smooth playback and no sound stuttering. Once that's on, uh, just back out and then click on overrides and then save call overrides. So what this does is uh, instead of having to enable that uh, threaded rendering all the time when you load up a ROM, this will save it for the core. And then for whatever game that you uh, load up, it will the threaded rendering will automatically be set on. But uh, for this to work, you do need to close the content and then reload it. Now sometimes you'll, you'll find that closing the content will either back out to RetroArch menu or back out to the Dev Home menu. So now um, when we run Demo, Demolition Fist, the threaded rendering should already be on. We don't need to mess around with that. As you can see, it's running smoothly now, and the sound is not choppy at all. Alright, let's go ahead and try out a Naomi game. And we are going to try out Gun Survivor 2. So this is basically the sequel to the original Biohazard Survivor for the PS1. Uh, this is basically Resident Evil Arcade. So this seems to be like based off the uh, Code Veronica engine. Um, it's graphically similar to that game, but in a just arcade format. You basically just go run and run and gun, and try not to get hit by the zombies. So Naomi games are a little bit more graphically enhanced than most of the Thomas Wave games. This is running pretty smoothly. The controls are seem to be inverted. Am I infected? For some reason down is forward. Jesus. The zombie dogs.
So if you wanted to change the control scheme, then you just press start and select, and then go down to options. Oh no, sorry, controls. And then you can change some of the controls here. Like I said, this is some of these Naomi games, the controls schemes are off, so you do have to reconfigure the controls. And then you can change the controller type by pressing left and right. You can use a keyboard on the uh, Xbox Series RetroArch. But I do believe the light gun doesn't work on here. You can. There's a few uh, shoot em ups, or rail shooters on the Naomi arcade. And for some reason, I couldn't get any of them to work. And you can also go down and change the shaders here. If you enable this, uh, just double check that on the online update that you have the latest uh, shader pack. So quickly just update GLSL shaders and then go back onto the game. And then go back on shaders and then load shader present. Shaders GLSR. And then we're going to put just this nice little CRT shader here, which is the. I like using this easy mode halation one. So you can see all the scan lines which replicate a uh, CRT TV. So it looks a lot better for that retro experience. And you're going to see a lot of the difference with um, sort of 2D based games. Well, the Atomus Wave games all look nice with this CRT TV shader and then there's there's various others as well that you can try and and you can also save the current shader so I think when whenever you load the game up it will have the border at the back or whatever um, filter in front we can also go on overrides and save core overrides or save game overrides um, so you can specifically choose which ROM you want to have certain shaders on. So let's just go ahead and try out one more game. Let's try out this uh, Atomus Wave game. So this game should look a lot better with a shader on. Oops. And this is Dolphin Blue, which seems to be like a uh, Metal Slug clone or Metal Slug type of game. running pretty smooth. Loving the visuals here. This is, this is pretty much Metal Slug, even though this is not an SNK game. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. That is how you get a Thomas Wave and Naomi games running on your Xbox Series S or X. 
and there are some rare titles that I haven't even heard of and you know, never seen in an arcade before, which is also pretty good that you can try these out yourself. And not all of these work, so there is a lot of trial and error. Um, you can refer to the GitHub compatibility spreadsheet, which tells you which games are working on RetroArch. Yeah, I do have like a bunch of games that do not work, so it's just a case of trying them out and and see if they run. If not, then they're most likely not going to work. So just be aware that the compatibility list isn't 100% on both the yeah, both the Naomi and the Atomus Wave. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again on another tutorial.